So yeah, let me tell y'all about this motherfucking situation. Like I'm saying, oh boy, you know, he's a little cutie. So we exchanged numbers and we had kicked it a couple times. And after we kick it a couple times, I get a call from my homegirl. And she's like, uh, what's up with you and our boy? And I'm like, nothing. Like, he cool. You know what I'm saying? We smoke. That's it. Like, we didn't kick it a couple times. Like, I didn't. He hit me up like I'm hungry as fuck. I'm like, oh, I'm finna cook XYZ. Can I get some? Can I come over? Sure. That's just the type of person I am. You ain't gonna come over no, with man, you. You know no, what I'm saying? No, you're not. Because I ain't ate and it's my birthday. Hey, and bro. Uh, <laughs> What he wants want? vegan food. <laughs> my son is vegan, but I don't have vegan food to feed him. You know what I'm saying? Apple in this motherfucker. I don't even think I ain't been to the store. I ain't been to the store at all. It might be an apple, orange, or organic banana. Or some upstairs I can go grab you real quick. Some um protein bars or something like that. But bro, like. This ain't even what we came here for. You never finna put me on blast like I got you over here hungry. But anyway, so yeah, dude pulls up. I don't even think he pulled up. I think I picked him up type shit because I don't think he had a car. Yeah. This was a minute ago though. <laughs> don't judge me. Judge your motherfucking mama. Hey. I'm nice like that. I pick up people. I drop them off. You know what I'm saying? Nobody I'm like seriously going to engage myself with. Like if you, you know what I'm saying? You know if I'm fucking with somebody for real, like they gonna have their ducks in a row. I entertain certain situations, like a queen. out of boredom. Okay, you know what like I'm saying? a queen. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying. But that's just the type of person I am. I'm a kind-hearted person, um, and that's how I put myself in certain predicaments because I'm so fucking nice. I don't know how to tell people no and shit. And case in point with this young man. Anyway, I get a call from my homegirl like, "What's up with?" You and our boy. She's like, you know, he messed with such and such. And I'm like, oh, I didn't know that. I'm glad you told me. You know what I'm saying? That's, you know, I'm, you know, nice to know. But no, nah, ain't shit going on. Apparently, dude, I heard tell him motherfuckers he didn't bag me. And it's like, he, he pressed me. But it didn't go down. And I actually felt hella bad. Like, I felt like I was playing kitty games and shit. You know what I'm saying? And as a woman... I don't know, like I don't play kitty games. If if uh, I if I bring it if I bring it to the to the boom boom room, you're gonna get the full Monique experience. But uh, that's not what he was here for, so he didn't get the full Monique experience. And he went and told people he did. And I'm like, <laughs> bro, I said if I'm like I, cause if, this is how they got to that. This is how he almost like had like I won't say proof, but it showed incriminated evidence because i text him and i was like i feel bad for playing with you like that you know what i'm saying uh, maybe yeah. we'll try again type shit okay because i like i felt bad because like i'm a grown-ass woman i'm on okay. my grown woman shit and if it's if i'm gonna do it i'm gonna do it okay. you know what i'm saying so i sent him the text and i guess he showed the bros and you know them this text and had them thinking like i see i told you i begged her and the homegirl hit That's me up like, yeah, you know what i'm saying yeah. but the, I specifically said in the text, like, you know what I'm saying, let's try again, like, like, let, let's, again, like, let's do it for real, because, like, that's, that was, like, along the lines, but right. there's no way, wait, no way, shape, or form where I actually said that, no, I'm gonna take that. Saying? I'm gonna take that. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I, I would have took yeah, that. Yeah, and I feel you on that. You would have got convicted if yes. I was on the jury. I feel you. I feel you on that. I respect you on that, and I respect anybody. You know what I'm saying? Who who he showed it to? But first of all, you childish as fuck because you going back, running off, popping off at the mouth, and that's why you didn't get it. You know what I'm saying? But. You know, and I knew better. I knew better, and when you know better, you're supposed to do better. But sometimes I don't do better, y'all. I'm working on it. I'm working. On it. Look, this was years ago. I'm look. I'm doing better now. I don't typically entertain situations that I know are not for me. You know, for the long haul. Okay. But that was just that one instance. So anyway, we gonna get off that. I'm just letting y'all know. So, dude, watching this shit, bro, quit lying on your I, Peter Weeder. This some. Um... I think we talked about this last time I was here. Not on, not on camera. Okay. That's in general conversation. I'm drinking mimosas, y'all. What else? What else? With this battle of the sexes. Battle of the what sexes. else you got? Uh, how many women have you ever slept with in the, in the same within 24 hours? Uh, in 24 hours, I've had sex with two women. In within 24, 24 hours. hours yeah. I've. Mm, I've had sex with two women in 24 I've hours. I've never had sex with two men in 24 hours. 
Sorry. Okay, so what's now, the shortest let me time you. that you have had sex? I no try to wait. I like no. you to try. It, it might be a one-off, one-time in your life occasion. But what's the shortest time? That <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Like, it could be 24 hours, 36 <laughs> hours, 48 hours. I don't know. Let me tell you about uh, currently, where I'm at currently. So, <laughs> I'm going to keep it 100. I'm going to keep it a buck with y'all. Okay. So, I ended up, you know, since, since breaking things off with the old man, Okay. I ended up in a situation that just happened by accident. Like, okay. it just, some shit cracked off. And I can't say, I ain't gonna say it happened by accident. Because at this point, it has happened more than once. It has actually happened more than twice. <laughs> more than three times. <laughs> this should have happened. <laughs> uh, no, I'm talking shit. But no, 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 no. I try, here's the thing about me. I try to date one person at a time i don't like i have a bad rap i've had niggas like men that try to get at me and be like i like you a lot like guys that i've talked to type shit and they'll flat out like mo i like you a whole lot but i know you're a player i know you got niggas off the wazoo and i don't so what do you call dating Okay, so I think that's a big miscommunication between women hey. when, when you say date all right well, let me dating ask you what to I mean. me is you know we're we're okay. going out, we're okay. hanging out, okay. you know what I'm saying? It doesn't, until we had a conversation where we're saying we're exclusively dating one another, dating to me is I'm free to date whoever the fuck I want to date, but I don't just date multiple people because I'm telling y'all, I'm goofy. So you only exclusively shit. date then? But that's by choice. If I, like, if I want to date other people, like, I'll still exchange numbers and shit with a guy if I'm just dating somebody. But I try not to do that because I'm goofy as fuck. Like, I fuck it up. I'm Look, I suck at love. I need a do-over. I'll be emotionally Fact, hey, available if I invite a do-over. That should be the fucking name, motherfucker. <laughs> I suck at love. I need a... I'm gonna fuck around name my podcast. Listen, okay. y'all. You fuck around name my podcast. That's, <laughs> that's, that's one of my favorite home verses off of... what? what uh, that's that 444. Uh, the song he the song he dedicated to B. One of the verses he say, I suck at love, I need a do-over. I'll be emotionally available if I invited you over. And that's how I feel like, you know what I'm saying? I be like, I, I'm a fuck up. When it comes to relationships, when it comes to love, I'm the queen of fuck ups. And this is the reason why. That's because crazy. in my mind, fuck you. <laughs> Yeah, same hour. Like, say, I'll fuck up a good thing. I'll fuck up a good thing. Exactly. Yeah. That's real talk. But, man, I don't know what it is about me and the male species <laughs> when it comes to dating and shit. I'm just not. I guess it's be, it stems from the shit that I endure coming up. Like, I, I watched my mama be, you know, I, I grew up in a piece of household. I've said this on my podcast before. Like, my father physically abused my mom. And I just made my mind up early on that ain't nobody going to treat me like that. Nobody's going to put their hands on me. You're not going to verbally abuse me. You're not going to physically abuse me. And if you're not going to treat me like I treat as good as I treat myself, you're not going to love me as much as I love myself. And it took me a long fucking time to get to this place where I love the shit out of myself. I accept me for the woman that I am, flaws and all, insecurities and everything. And people be like, what are you insecure about? I've said this before. Fun fact about Mo, I don't give a fuck how many times, how many men or women tell me, oh, you're beautiful, you're this, you're that. I'm still insecure as fuck. I still look in the mirror and pick myself apart and pick my flaws apart, point out my gap that people be like, Mo, nobody even notices that fucking gap in your mouth. I got a little side gap. I <laughs> notice it. Gap. Yeah, but I pick myself apart. And that's just a little fun fact about me. Like, you know what I'm saying? I don't give a fuck. Y'all see the pictures on social media. You know what I'm saying? The carefully curated pictures that we post on social media. Like, man, don't let that shit fool you. Like, I have my own insecurities. You I know beat why myself people feel up. that way, though? You know what I'm saying? It's because even for that, for I can't, just like somebody can't tell me how to feel about myself, I can't tell you how to feel about yourself. But for you to say that's one of your insecurities, right? People that know you know that that's a choice thing. Because if you wanted to get braces, you would. So right. on the outside, it's like 
Shit, it can't bother you that much. Right. Otherwise, Monday, and it's, it's, you actually have it's actually hereditary. We all have this gap. We got it from my dad. And, like, it doesn't bother me to that extent. Right. But when I look in the mirror, I notice it. Like, if you notice pictures that I take, you're going to notice that usually it's going to be my right peripheral, not my left. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And that's why I decided to get my sleeve on my left arm so that I would show my left peripheral more. Because I could have easily went with my right arm, but I wanted my left arm so that I can get comfortable. And I said, this sleeve's going to make me do that or whatnot. But, yeah, like, you, we all have our fucking insecurities and shit. And I don't give a fuck how much confidence you may think I exude. Bro. I'm still insecure as fuck, and I'm still just a fucking human being, a woman who wants to be loved and treated properly by a fucking, by a man, by, by my counterpart, like by my equal, the man I view as my equal, right. not no nigga that's going to be disrespectful and tear me down every chance that they get because of some shit that they're dealing with within themselves. That was another thing with the old man, this old man rip me to shreds like would literally tear me down every chance he got okay. to the point where i was just like at first i thought it was like constructive criticism like right, you right. know what i'm saying you know how like i told my best friend early on in a relationship like he the type of man i trust to leave me and i really was looking at his direction and advice and just the shit he was telling me about myself as him trying to help me be the best Bird me, you. best yeah. version of myself that I can be. And the way I look at relationships, when you're dealing with somebody, you know, you're a representation of that person. When you yeah. walk out the house, I'm representing this man. When he walks out the house, he's representing me. And I want to be the best possible representation of you and of myself. Because if, trust me, if if he on my arm, if he make it to social media, if y'all see him, hey, that's the one. Trust, trust he's earned that spot. He yeah. earned that spot. And I never had a man try to correct me and make me a better, like, help me become the best version of myself. You know right. what I'm saying? I've had men who were less than, so to speak, where they just had me on a pedestal. They thought I was the fucking beginning. You and were end. the gold. You know, exactly. Yeah. Like, I was, you know what I'm saying? I was the pot of gold. Yeah. And, like, my ex fiance, he thought I was a pot of gold. But, like, the only thing, dude, my ex fiance in Atlanta, he hated my slang. He'd be like, babe, you have a fucking PhD. You're a doctor. Why do you say shit like slim and bro? <laughs> <laughs> fam in your everyday conversation yeah. that's just me like but you know what I'm saying you and it's you exactly, doctor, but you exactly. You I've always before, been you know Mo like this is who this is a part of me this is who I am and like honestly yeah he hated my lingo and shit and that was one of the things that honestly kind of solidified the end of that engagement that relationship everything because he called me on my birthday I was in the airport heading to Quebec. I've said I told y'all this story. Probably ain't told you, but he says uh he talked he shared some shit with me and I was like, damn, that's fucked up, fam. And he's like, fam. I was like, <laughs> my bad. I said, my bad, bro. And he just hung up the phone. And I mean, uh, what was it? Like it uh, was like like a nigga can't tell you his grandma died. And he, you no, like, it wasn't that's a, fucked up. No. <laughs> he tells me that and I think it was all a lie to get me. He thought I was going to come run into his beck and call because he didn't expect me not to be there. Like, pers I guess, on my birthday. Okay. And I honestly think it was all his ploy to get me to come run into his beck and call like I always did before. Like, anytime I left and I was home, he could call my fucking phone. And within the, within the next fucking 24 hours or less... I'm packing a bag and I'm out the door, either hitting the highway or hopping on a flight. You know what I'm saying? Right. And I'll always do that. But he hits my line and he's like, um, his sentence in here and it's coming up. Okay. Now, he told me about his past history. Like, he had done some time and shit. He was on a straight and arrow. He had, you know, businesses and shit. And he was doing shit good happens. for himself. But we've been together for the last two years, back and forth. And not once have you indicated to me that you had 
any type of legal matters going on. Say, um, so, you know what I'm saying? For you to call me on my birthday out the blue and was like, you know, my sentencing hearing coming up. And I'm like, damn, like, that's, I didn't, you caught me off guard. I'm sitting in a fucking airport. My mind is on some other shit. I'm getting ready to go to Canada. Right. I don't really know what the fuck to say. So I say what naturally comes to mind. Damn, that's fucked up, fam. Really, Mo? <laughs> what? I was like, my bad, my bad, bro, or my bad, Slim, or whatever the fuck I said. Click. And that kind of solidified where we stood, honestly. But that's what he hated about me. The old man, he hated my slang. Wait, so question. So you didn't know he was going away at all? Like, this was the I, there was beginning no, of you. This was two two years into this whole situation shit with this young man. You know what I'm saying? You've never once indicated that you had any lingering legal shit. So that's why I think it was all a fucking ploy thinking he didn't know. He didn't know I was sitting in the airport getting ready to go to Canada because I hadn't talked to him in a couple, you know, in a minute since I had left Atlanta. I hadn't talked to him. Gotcha. And so he calls a tip. He knows it's my birthday. Say, how you doing? I'm just calling to wish you a happy birthday. What are you up to? Oh, I'm in the airport. Where are you headed? I'm going to Quebec. Oh, well, I was just calling to let you know that my sentence in here coming up. Yeah. And I don't, maybe he didn't think I was actually on my way to Quebec. So, Yo. he just threw that shit out there thinking if she really is in the airport, maybe she, you know, because that's what old Mo would have did. Mo would have changed, changed that fucking flight like back. I got to get to back. Like, my homegirls can attest to this. Like, I'll straight wake up like I'm getting ready to go to Atlanta. Like, he called, hit my line. I'm going down to Atlanta. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Packed my bags up straight, went down there. With intentions on building a life with him there, but life has a funny fucking way. Tell me about it. Of happening and just you know moving shit around and let, and placing you where the fuck you supposed to be. And this is where I was supposed to be, and this is what I was supposed to be doing. So this is where I landed. But yeah, like shit, shit like that. But the old man, nah, dude, just criticized every fucking thing. And then the final straw, he says. One day he's like, and we're not even going to talk about how you dress. Sir! How do I dress? Okay, wait. Right. So what is your biggest issue? I think I figure mine out. What is, I start, I'll start. And I, you can think about your one. Okay. What is your biggest, I don't want to say flaw, but deterrent, for lack of better words. When, With what, a significant what's other? keeping you from being married right now? Or if not even married, being in a, relationship? in a strong relationship. I think mine, honestly, is I do enjoy my freedom. And some people might hear that as trying to be a hoe. It ain't even trying to be a hoe. It's I just enjoy, I'm in a phase of doing what the fuck I want to do or whatever. Which sometimes is by myself. It ain't right. even that I want to be with another bitch. It's the, another woman. You've it's already that, said the well, word you know, multiple times. But I mean, look, I've fly. dated some bitches and I've dated some women. All okay? right, there's a difference. So, there's, a difference. You know, there's definitely a difference. But it's... Sometimes I just want to be alone. You know what I'm saying? And women sometimes react the same, thinking you fucking with somebody else. I think it's just not wanting to spend that time with them. It ain't. It don't matter if it's with somebody else or by myself. Right. You know what I'm saying? I feel you. I feel you. So and you I like your freedom. You I like, like your freedom. Like and I got a ego about myself. I don't know that I don't plan on um, changing. No There's nothing thing. wrong with having ego, like. That's another thing. Ego and arrogance. Like, the old man. Constantly, you and that fucking ego and you and that arrogance. The same shit you wanted me for is the same shit you hate me for now. My like, I love your confidence. With I ego love as if you honest, though. Like, if your ego is built on reality, then... And I don't mean throw things in a motherfucking face or nothing like mm -hmm. that, but if the things that you overconfident... I don't want to say overconfident. That you're justifiably confident about... Or real fucking things that right. it is, then I feel like you justify it. And that's and but here's the thing about me. You know me, B. Anybody that knows me, they'll flat out be like, Mo, you the most humble motherfucker I know. I'm the coolest, chillest, most laid back, never stuck up, never right. nose turned up, never right. shitty to anybody. Never down at anybody. Like, I get uncomfortable, uncomfortably quiet when motherfuckers are sitting around speaking on somebody else. Because 
for me, I promise you, you're never the topic of the conversation when I'm at, when I'm having the conversation. Right. But when other motherfuckers sitting around and they're talking about somebody, regardless of who it is, their family or what, that shit makes me uncomfortable as fuck. And I get quiet. I don't know what to say. It makes me, you know, uncomfortable. But that's just me. If you know, if you in my circle and you know me, you know that about me. You know just how I don't give a fuck. I let everybody do them. Facts. And I do me. Facts. I'm like, I'm All not right. looking at scrolling down social media, looking at social media like nose turned up, feeling away about a single soul. Like there's not a single person walking this earth right here, right now that I have ill feelings towards. Like I have hate in my heart towards them. Right. I wish anything, like, I don't have that energy to exert into nobody else's shit. Because guess what? I'm not trying to miss my fucking blessings that are due to me. So I put out good, and it comes back to me triple fold. I'm going to keep it 100. You know what I'm saying? I'm not at that level yet. I'm, I, it ain't nobody I got no ill feelings toward. But it's a couple niggas of, you know, I found out they died today, I wouldn't cry. Uh, you was. know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, hey, I've had a, a, few situ- I've like had that a that person exists. that <laughs> literally took me to a space where I'm like, I was like, man, if something bad happened to them, I wouldn't feel away. And they actually died a few years ago. And when I got somebody, one of my homegirls hit me up and was like, Mo, guess who died? And they told me, I'm like, wow, that's fucked up. And I literally, when I hung up the phone, all I said was, I pray for peace and protection and her kids to be surrounded by love. Like, I just, I didn't even have it in me to like, yeah, yeah. you know, so like, it, it fucked me up when I heard because, you know, you got your whole life ahead of you and, and it's taken away, it's cut short, you know what I'm saying? But I just don't have that energy to exert into anybody else's life where I'm sitting up, you know what I'm saying, feeling that type of way, but... Anyway, back on subject. My biggest, what we talking about, flaws. Yo, what's what is it about you that you can't put on somebody else? That's the biggest deterrent from having from, you move forward. forward in like a you know, this shit is on me. If I change this, or not even if you change it, but some. If I change, if I change, I don't even want to say if you change it, because okay. it might be something you're completely comfortable with, but you just know it's gonna take a certain type of person to, to accept that thing. About me. Yeah. My blatant, unapologetic honesty and my open dialogue and communication with my partner. Until I meet a man that's willing to be open and truly honest about who he is as a person, what it is he wants, and what direction he wants to go in. I, like that's probably why I'm single because the suitors are plenty but I just ain't met nobody that's and I'm not even talking I'm, when I say on my level I ain't talking about like education wise I'm probably never gonna you know what I'm saying I might you know if I put myself in the right circles or you know what I'm saying I'm never gonna say I'm it, it's not possible you right. know what I'm saying but to me uh you know a guy a doctor PhD you know some shit like that that's not what I'm looking for. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. I, I look at guys like that. You know, those, I'm oh, not the good. woman for them. You know what right, I'm saying? Right. I'm tatted up. You know, I, I say shit like Slim and Bro and <laughs> right. Sam. You know what I'm saying? He Do I know how to act if he took me to a function where I had to be fucking completely sophisticated? Oh, absolutely. I'm the woman you can take you any can fucking work. You can go to the and I Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. I, I can twerk. And I could, you know what I'm saying, ball fucking ballroom dance. Ball dance. Yes, <laughs> right. absolutely. Like, I'm just that type of person. But the type of man that I am attracted to, you know what I'm saying? I like my guys a little, you know, slightly hood. Right. Handsome, educated, right. you know, loyal. So, until you, I meet a man... To too much. That's no, I'm not. Just until, I, until I meet a man that's like, willing to have an open dialogue. Who's open and honest because I am. And motherfuckers hate that about Like people straight hate that about me. I've had guys like I oh because I absolutely overshare. I hold no punches. If I'm talking about building something with you, we need to be able to talk. You need to be able to know who I am as a person. And I'm not even talking about up front. Right. You know, I don't just lead with, hey, you know, <laughs> da da da. 
I let it progress. No. And when we reach that point, I'm, I, I start being open. Like, I openly say shit. Like, I grew up in an abusive household. I don't want a man to look at that as if I'm abusive. I can be. I will fuck some shit up if I need to. But I don't want a man to look at that as I'm abusive or I'm fucked up. Because right. although I grew up in an abusive household, me and my dad close as fuck. I love my pops. I don't hold that shit against him. I understand that that was his way of life. Like, that's what he knew. He grew up seeing that shit. So, in turn, he thought that's what it was supposed to be. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's how you fucking mold your woman type shit. Okay. More so, look at my mom. She's deceased, but it took me years to forgive her for even tolerating the shit. Right. I remember asking my mom, like, Mom, how could you possibly, why would you ever, like, I was a little older, and I said, how can you love him so much? How do you allow, why would you allow him to treat you the way he treats you? Right. And my mom said, I've said this in the episode before. Mom said, until you know love and you truly been in love, you'll never know the lengths you'll go to keep the person you love. You ne you won't know what you'll tolerate. I agree and I guess I ain't never been in love like that. I tolerated some shit. From one relationship, I put up with a lot of shit from one relationship. And I'm never going to say it wasn't love because I still got, you know, mad love for dude and had mad love for him at the time. But as I've grown in my spirituality and just really gotten closer and educated myself on a number of things, I understand what that relationship was. You know what I'm saying? I understand it was a it was karmic. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. shit had to unfold the way that it <laughs> unfolded because it was a karmic connection. So I get that now. I understand that now. You know what I'm saying? And until you get to reach this, the level that I'm at now with this spirituality shit and yeah. just really understanding different situations that present themselves to you and understanding like and being able to recognize shit for what it is you know what i'm saying like so that's where i'm at now in my in my walk so anyway but i feel an interesting way about karma okay right? okay so, it's so a bitch my question. and i'm her sister <laughs> her favorite doctor babe do you what? feel like uh karma is kind of be mindful of the energy you come you put yes. out because yes. indeed right? indeed so then i always question this what if and maybe you don't think karma works this way. I do, right? So, the thing about karma is, I think that you can do something fucked up to somebody mm -hmm. and feel guilty about it and feel like that's coming back to you. Right. But, unbeknownst to you, they did something fucked up to somebody else. Right. So, you are actually being their karma, but you don't know that. Don't know it. And you walking around feeling guilty. You know, but look, how how does how does the law of karma work though? Because regardless of whether or not you were their karma, you still did some foul shit. How do we know the laws of karma don't say that even though you were their karma, you still go pay that debt. For so that karma shit. is forever going? Because for, hey. for you to be balanced out, that means somebody now has to do some fuck up to you. But they're going to have to pay for that. Right. So this shit is ever going. Right. That's true. I feel like it, it's, I think it's, it's ever going. It's everlasting. And, and look, karma don't got a date or a time. It's just I'm like, just I'm like, the, just like y'all God that's coming back from heaven. We <laughs> don't know the day or the hour. Let me tell you, the karma, you don't know the day or the hour, but I'm telling you, you put out bad juju, that shit's going to come back to you. You put out good juju, that shit's going to come back to you, man. The law of attraction, I'm telling you, what you put out comes back to you. You know what I'm saying? And I'm, I'm living fucking witness. I can attest to that shit. It's going to come back, whether good or bad. And I've done fucked up shit. I've, I've, I've had my fair share in hurting. I've also had my fair share in being hurt. I've been hurt. like, And I'm not like, I've had my heart completely, completely broken. And ever since I've had my heart completely, completely broken, I've been, like, my ego has been bruised by men. And it's because of this fucking wall, this imaginary wall that I have up, where I say I'm open, and, and this is probably going to be my flaw. I, I'm open, okay. and I let a motherfucker in so far, but... I'm so guarded. 
I'm so guarded. Like it's certain shit you're not gonna get to. It's certain shit about me you're not gonna have. You you won't get access. And I guess that goes along with my kids, my family. You know what I'm saying? I'll kick it with you. You can take me wherever you want to take me around your friends, family, and shit. But when it comes to my shit, I you're not getting in. You're not yeah. getting in. I, and here's the thing: when it comes to the guys all day, I tell my boys, my, my boys playing the shit out of me. They like my kids. Like I have that relationship with yeah. my boys. If I'm going on a date, I'd be like, and they know, I, they know the nicknames, Ugly Bay. Uh. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like, I'll be like, I'm getting ready to go out with Ugly Bay. We yeah. going X, Y, Z. Like, okay. but that's all they're going to know. If they accidentally yeah. see somebody in passing, it's an accident. Right. You know what I'm saying? But I'm not introducing. And, and I've had a guy come at me like, Mo, why won't you let me in? Like, I'll be like, I'm getting ready to go to my family function. I've been on a date with a dude. And he thinking the night we go... Right, right. I'm like, no, nah, my people's having a kickback. I'm finna run better. I'll call you when I'm done. Right. I can't go. No, you're not going. Yeah, to family no, function. No, I'm with that. And I'm I get there, and my people's like, well, and I'll have to feed them some bullshit to get them to shut up. No, I don't bring people here to y'all. Like, no, because if I did, they'd be like. If I brought every motherfucking body that I'm dating, they'd be like, this motherfucker, she's a, she run a little whole house. And I'm not, because I'm not fucking everybody that I'm hanging with. But, you know what I'm saying? I do have, right. you know, it's, it, I don't call it, like, it a revolving door, but, right. you know what I'm saying? Again, I'm not on no cocky, arrogant shit. I meet guys, I hang out with them, I go on dates and shit, but, you know, that's probably, that, that'll probably be my thing, like, the boundaries that I set. I'll let I'll reel you in so motherfucking far and show you everything you want to see in a woman because I am every fucking woman. But I like that I just that's where you you remain stagnant in that space. Right. And you're not gonna progress like we can't progress like that if you keeping me stagnant. But you gotta show me some amazing shit. For you mm -hmm. to get past that hurdle, that block, that guard that's up. So, there's no, hey, I'm sorry. Y'all <laughs> created this fucking you monster. You just apologize to your candidates. Yes, y'all created this monster, man. Like, I've I've endured. Like, I, I could do 10 episodes on my dating, my dating life. I hate to say it. But read the book, The Miseducation of Monique Cross, Part 1. Coming to a bookstore That's online very, very soon. All right, question. So I got a homegirl who made a statement a while ago with this stuff with me. She said she had a point in life where she refused to fuck with a nigga that make less than $50,000 a year. Now, you being well accomplished yourself, I'll, I'm not even asking you this, do this apply to you. I'm going to just ask you, what are your thoughts on the statement in general? My thoughts on that statement is this. If that's your preference, that's your preference. But you're limiting yourself and potentially cheating yourself out of a, a love, like the love of your life. Because not everybody's going to be able to make 50000 a year. Well, you know, some of us say love don't pay the bills. It don't. And 50000 to me, that's, you know what I'm saying, that's. That's been, you know, like, that's high up there. Because motherfuckers are not making 50000 a year if we're being realistic. You know what I'm saying? I'm not, because I, I hold my shit down on my own, I'm not pressed about what the next man is making. I'm not concerned with what's in your bank account. And I know some people, some women going to be like, she's stupid or she's lying. I'm not. I If you know my track record, you know I've dated men with less because I'm not concerned with what's in your pocket because I'm going to handle I'm going to hold my shit down regardless. Right. And anything you bring to the table is a bonus. I'm more concerned with your character, how you treat other people, how you going to treat me, how you respect me and the people in your circle, right. and how you going to make me feel as a woman. Right. Like anything else additional is a bonus. You know what I'm saying? Do we all want a man that's bringing six figures to the table? Absolutely, yes. I would love to have a man that's bringing six figures to the table. But if I meet a guy that's bringing 
40,000 to the table and he loves what the fuck he does, he's passionate about it, he wakes up in the morning and he's ready to go get it and he's happy. Okay. Like, that's what matters. You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day... So I'm just like devil's advocate. So you like nice things and you like to travel. Yeah. So that means that... And I'm not saying I agree with the statement. Right? I'm just asking questions. So do that mean that to be with somebody that made 40000 a year, you've just ultimately accepted to finance the things you like to do will be on you for the Here's most the part. Thing, it ain't like a nigga making 40 for nothing. But, right, I but, provide for myself, and if and here and if we come together as a as a whole, and we we join forces together, you know what I'm saying? This our shit. We making it happen. I ain't saying we getting joint bank accounts and shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. we, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. But I, what I'm saying is, I'm not the female. Like, if you can afford to take me on a trip, great. You know what I'm saying? Save up for that shit. But I'm not this female that's sitting up asking for extravagant shit. You know what I'm saying? I'm sorry. I'm not. Like, any bag I bought, I bought on my own. Have I had a man buy me a bag? Yes, I've had men buy me bags before. You know what I'm saying? I had men buy me shoes and different things. But not because I'm pressed for it or I'm asking. That was out of the kindness of their heart. I'm just not that girl. And when I, you know, I don't judge women who are. You know what I'm saying? Okay. I'll tell you quick. You know, the, the joke between me and my sisters, like... Bitches say, oh, I'm broke. You ain't broke. You sitting on at least $40 worth of pussy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That, nah, that's, the joke that. that's the joke between me and my sisters, though. That's the joke between yeah, me and my sisters. If I said sister. that, the comments are a little way different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. But that, that's, that's, the, that's the shit I say to my sisters. That's the shit we say to each other. Right, right. But just, you know what I'm saying? I don't knock nobody. I'm not knocking no female or no man's hustle. If you are her hustling fellas, you know what I'm saying, getting bags and trips and this and that and the other, I'm not knocking it, nor am I hating. I'm not sitting up gossiping like all of you. No, I'm not. It's just not me. And anybody who know me, no, I'm not the female out here asking no man for nothing. I was already always taught growing up. You ask a man, you got your hands out, he wants some in return. Right. And if I ain't trying to give you nothing in return, I'm not asking you for shit. And for me, it's about the fucking heart and love. And like, I'm a sucker for love. Like, I love the idea of love. And I love the idea of love. Yeah. I love love, period. Like, I'd be happy as fuck for anybody who's happy and in love and shit. But for me, like, if understand this, it, fellas, if I ever fuck with you, I promise you. It was because I was fucking with you. Not off the strength of nothing you can do for me. Nothing you gave to me. And any guy who's ever I've ever dealt with. And they watching this. They know that for a fact. I'm never the girl that had their hands out. I've had guys help me. Come through for me when I was in need of shit. But never the chick that got their hands out. But go ahead. Let's Question for you. Damn. Alright I do got a, I got a quick question for you. Alright. Alright. When I said the idea of love, you said you love love, period. When you think of love, the majority of people you know in relationships, are they what you believe love to be? Is that what they have? That's why I say I like the I idea. Wanna, I don't know nobody that got what two, I think of when I think of the love I want to have. I ain't going to say nobody. The but. two relationships closest to me that they're, they're married, the two relationships that are closest to me, these are my cousins. Like, I see these relationships on full display. And I absolutely look at them and I know that it's love. It's genuine love. I'm, I'm close to them and they're married. Both of them are married. And I look at their relationships and I'm never like, oh, goals, you know, those are my goals. Because you don't know what the fuck going on behind closed doors. Right. And like my cousins, I don't know what's going on behind closed doors. I know the shit that they share with me and I know what I see. And for them, those two relationships... I look at them, they solid as fuck. It's love. It's, they're surrounded by love. They're surrounded by support. And they love each other and they support each other. And they uplift each other. You know what I'm saying? But like I said, I don't know what's going on behind closed doors. It's none of my business. Right. I'm glad I don't know what's going on behind closed doors. I love how they keep their business their business. Right. And they show what the fuck they want to show. I respect that about them. And you know what I'm saying? But I believe in love. Even after all my heartbreaks, after all the shit I've endured when it comes to the male species, I still believe in love. And I know for a fact that this ain't it for me. Alright y'all, we gonna go on and shut this shit down right here. 
we didn't talk about everything under the sun from A to Z. And we initially said we were going to title this episode Battle of the Sexes. I don't know. We might have to come up with something a little more clever than that because we went into uh, death on a lot of topics here. So, Thanks. anyhow, thank you all for tuning in to Pure Fuck You, the podcast. Thank you for having to me. To my homeboy, Coach Hug, Thanks. my boy B. Thank you so much with my whole heart. I appreciate you for taking the time out of your birthday weekend. Fact. Your quick trip to the STL yeah. to come through to Pure Fuckery, the podcast, and sit down and chop it up with me. That shit means a lot. That speaks volumes to me. That should speak volumes to you guys. That lets you guys know just how dope Pure Fuckery, the podcast, is. Go ahead and plug your socials. Plug your uh, upcoming podcast. Go ahead. Okay. Shout out to the fuckers. Tell them where they can find you at. Follow you on social media, whatever, whatever. I got the Clubhouse podcast coming. My coach, you know. I thought we just said it was gonna be our sucking love. You know what? I didn't know. This was the thing. <laughs> it was gonna be our sucking love, right? <laughs> I already had the clubhouse name. You said that. I was like, that's cold. But then he was like, Jay Z came up with that shit. I'm like, that's oh just no, a, that's just the no, first song his album. No, I was like, damn, I got this from my homegirl. All right, whatever, whatever. Yeah. All right. So anyway, the clubhouse, clubhouse podcast. You can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, at Play4Coach. Play the number four and coach spelled the correct way. Uh, so Play4Coach. It's my birthday. You want to show me some love? I know this coming out after. That's my cash app too. Oh, Play shit. number four, coach. Cash and, uh, out my boy, B, y'all. With my whole heart, I appreciate it. To the fuckers out there tuning in. And you got to come do my shit. I got you. I'm there. Uh, I'm on me. I'm there. We got to Skype it up or if I touch down, you, I'm pretty sure I touch down your way. So definitely. We going to make it work. We going to make it happen. But to the fuckers, with my whole heart, y'all know I appreciate the love, the support, the comments, the shares. Man, y'all don't know how much I love you guys. Check me out on my socials. So sophisticated one. That's it's O O sophisticated one on Instagram. Pure underscore fuckery on Instagram as well. So Mo on Twitter. I'm also on Facebook. Just Monique Ross. It's your favorite Dr. Bay. I love you guys. I'll catch you in the next episode. Peace.